Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss reticulin staining. The reticulin fibers they form a network supporting dense cellular organs like liver, spleen, and lymph nodes. They cannot be visualized in HNE stain section. So for their demonstration, we need special stains. So they are demonstrated on paraffin sections by silver impregnation method and on frozen section by paradic acid shift method. So before the staining procedure, we will discuss some important points about the stain. Silver impregnation or metal impregnation technique, it provides contrast enabling even the finest fibers to be demonstrated. So pre-oxidation with KMNO4 followed by bleaching in oxalic acid is an important step that inhibits the agrophilia of the fibers and helps to impregnate the metal over the fibers. If this step is skipped, if pre-oxidation followed by bleaching in oxalic acid, we are not able to this do this step, then there is failure to impregnate successfully. So the silver impregnation, silver or other metal will not impregnate over the fibers. So pre-oxidation with KMNO4 and then bleaching in oxalic acid is important step. Now in addition a mordant is used. Iron alum is the commonest sensitizing agent or mordant used in reticulin stain. Other perichloride, silver nitrate and urinal nitrate they can also be used as mordant. So as the name suggests silver impregnation method, so we have to use silver solution. Impregnation is carried out with ammonical silver solution. So we add hydroxide or carbonate solution to a solution of silver nitrate to produce precipitate. This pre precipitate is redissolved by addition of ammonia solution. So by adding ammonia, we will get ammonical silver solution. So to the silver nitrate, we first add hydroxide or carbonate solution so that we can make a basic aqua silver nitrate. Then we add ammonia to it to make ammonical silver solution. Any excess of ammonia results in great loss of reticulin fiber impregnation. So, better to use less ammonia than is needed to dissolve the precipitate and filter to remove remaining turbidity. So, we will use ammonical silver solution and excess of ammonia will lead to reduced impregnation. As we are using ammonia, so ammonical silver salts when in dry state they are potentially dangerous due to their explosive properties. So precautions to be taken as it has explosive properties. Metal forceps should not come in contact with ammonical silver solutions. So fresh ammonia is preferable. Careful handle the sections while staining as strongly alkaline silver solutions that is the silver nitrate solution with hydroxide or carbonate alkaline solutions they have marked tendency to lift the sections of the slides so these are the precautions now coming to reagents that we are going to use in reticulin staining number one is kmno4 solution we have already discussed and oxalic acid for bleaching 1% aqueous oxalic acid 0.5% KMNO4 aqueous 95 ml and 5 ml of 
सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड थ्री परसेंट सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट एक्वस आयरन एलम मॉडेंट देन सिल्वर सोल्यूशन हाउ सिल्वर सोल्यूशन इज मेड सिल्वर सोल्यूशन इट शुड बी फ्रेशली फॉर्म्ड बिफोर यूज तो टेक फाइव एम एल ऑफ टेन परसेंट एक्वस सिल्वर नाइट्रेट सोल्यूशन then add concentrated ammonia drop by drop until the precipitates first formed they dissolves then add 5 ml of 3% NaOH solution redissolve the precipitate by adding concentrated ammonia drop by drop until precipitates first form they dissolves then make the final volume to 50 ml with distilled water filter it and store in a dark bottle now the fifth reagent used is 10% aqueous neutral formalin 0.2% gold chloride solution gold chloride solution it renders preparation completely permanent and produces a neutral black color of high density so gold chloride solution it is an optional step to use gold chloride solution it renders preparation completely permanent so for permanent staining and it produces a neutral black color of high density then 5% sodium thiosulfate it removes the unreduced silver it is also an optional solution or optional step that we can use in reticulum staining sodium thiosulfate it removes the unreduced silver eighth reagent is the counter stains counter stains used are hematoxylin or von giesen or light green or neutral red so method of reticulum staining first step is bring sections to water then oxidize in kmno4 for 5 minutes then again wash in tap water then after oxidization in kmno4 we will bleach the sections in 1% oxalic acid for another 2 minutes then wash well in running tap water then rinse in distilled water after that we will sensitize the sections in iron alum that is mordant for 15 minutes so sensitization in iron alum mordant for 15 minutes then again rinse well in distilled water then eighth step is impregnate with silver solution the freshly made silver solution we will impregnate the sections with silver solution for 15 seconds to 1 minute so for a time period of 15 seconds to 1 minute till it becomes transparent wash well in several changes in distilled water then another reagent 10% aqueous neutral formalin is used then reduce in 10% aqueous neutral formalin for about 3 minutes then again wash well in tap water then these are the optional steps the section can be toned in 0.2% gold chloride for 10 minutes for high density permanent staining then rinse in tap water then again fix in 5% sodium thiosulfate to remove excess silver for 1 minute these are the optional steps toning with 0.2% gold chloride and fixing in 5% sodium thiosulfate then again wash in tap water after washing then we will use counter stain counter stain either hematoxylin or von giesen or other stain we have already discussed
then after counter staining dehydrate the sections then clear with xylene and then mount with dpx so how the reticulin fibers will stain the reticulin fibers will take black color the nuclei are gray or unstained they remain unstained or they take gray color the reticulin fibers are black other tissues they take according to the counter stain used so what are the uses of reticulin stain firstly to differentiate between undifferentiated carcinoma and sarcomas so the undifferentiated carcinoma in this group of cells they are surrounded by the reticulin fibers so reticulin fibers will surround the group of cells in undifferentiated carcinoma while in sarcoma the individual cells they are enveloped by the fibers so in sarcoma individual cells are highlighted or enveloped by the fibers while in undifferentiated carcinoma the collections or group of the cells they are surrounded by reticulin fibers then another use it is important stain to confirm suspected hemangioparasitoma and angiosarcoma in hemangioparasitoma the reticulin stain shows thickened basal lamina parasites outside the vessels and each one entrapped by the fibers so basal lamina of the vessel is thickened and the parasite outside the vessels each parasites they are entrapped by the fibers while in angiosarcoma the cells devoid of fibers they are seen within the lumen of vessels another use in early myelofibrosis suspected cases of early myelofibrosis it reveals early reticulin form fibrosis in trifine bone marrow biopsy sections it can be used to identify the cell dropouts in liver biopsy they are revealed by condensation of reticulin framework so the reticulin framework is condensed when cell drop dropouts are seen in liver biopsy so these are the uses of reticulin fibers in liver biopsy cell dropouts in suspected early myelofibrosis then to differentiate between undifferentiated carcinoma and sarcoma the un in undifferentiated carcinoma groups of cells are surrounded by reticulin fibers while in sarcoma individual cells are enveloped by fibers in hemangio hemangioparasitoma reticulin stain shows thickened basal lamina and the parasites outside the vessels the parasites they are entrapped by the fiber each parasite they are entrapped by fibers and in angiosarcoma the cells are devoid of fibers they are seen within the lumen of the vessels thank you very much